making this film for my friend Gus Hadley and uh, Grizzly Bear and also Janice I thought you'd enjoy seeing this old Lionel 253 it was made in 1924 through 1932 this is O scale and uh, when I bought it it was definitely a no runner the wheels had what they called zinc cancer or zinc rot and you can see this really awful looking wheel down here and of course I made it worse when I pulled it off it it was just it was almost like exploding into dust pieces of the wheel and what happened was three of the four wheels came out of a bad mold and uh, possibly some dirt or other foreign object got into to the mold and it's fairly common on some of these old trains to get these wheels that are just completely cracked and falling apart this is one of them interesting thing is it had three bad wheels and one excellent wheel and I could tell by the wear patterns that the other wheel was fine uh, and one of the uh, not fine one of the original wheels so uh, obviously it came from a different mold uh, you can see the little uh, reverser here on the front of the engine that's just the outside switch and I've removed the inside reverser and that all has to be it's actually hanging inside there I wouldn't be dumb enough to uh, take it out of the train and then try to remember which wire went to which because it's got a whole lot of wires that control the lights and the reversing and all the wires uh, the insulation around the wires has has fallen apart so if I were to fire this up everything would short out I have uh isolated it check the isolated the wires check the uh, armature and the brushes and believe it or not it runs so i'm really happy about this it's got all the hardware it's got the little tiny pretend panogram on the front you can see up here in the front and uh headlight holder little whistle another headlamp holder and there's the 607 car another 607 car another 607 car which I'm gonna have to tear it down today because this is either the best repaint I've ever seen in my life or it was left in its original wrapper there's just no sign of wear anywhere on this car including the wheels so I'm thinking somebody accidentally sent this one aside and never got played with so that's a big plus even though it looks kinda odd running next to the other uh, faded cars I forgot to mention I think I forgot to mention this color is called peacock and it's one of my favorite colors and in the back is my 608 observation car so this is my new project I'm gonna take this thing outside probably today or tomorrow and do one heck of a lot of soldering careful soldering take remove one wire at a time and I've got this up next to my marks M10,005 to give everybody an idea of the scale and it is quite a bit larger than the uh, M10,005 and I'm also going to remove the M10,005 and just roll this by so everybody gets an idea of what this thing looks like uh, you see trains run around fast and you really don't get to see what they look like up close so let's uh, See if I can pull the wheel off. Get the M10,000 cream and green M10,005. Should have had another cup of coffee. Maybe I could talk better. 
and roll these cars by very slowly if they don't come uncoupled. Here's the one that's the mystery car. I really don't think it's a repaint. I think it's uh, original. Here's a beautiful observation. This is a little back porch, I call it. Made out of brass. Which I think it's pretty cool. Just imagine somebody standing out there smoking their cigar and watching the world go by as the train goes down the, the tracks. Other interesting story behind these trains were my father explained to me. Uh, first time I saw one of these engines, my father was born in Brooklyn, New York, and I never really understood why Lionel made these engines, because I didn't think they looked very realistic, because, of course, coming, being born in California, everything I saw as a child was a steam train or a very early diesel, and as it turned out, uh, Dad explained to me that it was illegal to run steam trains in New, New York City uh, sometime in the early 1900s. They passed this law, so all trains had to run either on a third rail or on the pantogram from up above and run off of electricity because all that extra pollution, uh, number one, it would have gassed everybody out through the subway tunnels, and it would have gassed everybody out in the city. And New York had enough pollution uh, with the early motor cars, and of course they had their coal-driven uh, uh, power plants. So these were actual trains that ran in New York in the 20s and I assume possibly through the 30s and uh, Lionel made these before they made anything else Joshua Lionel Cohen uh, came from New York and these were the trains that he saw so he was gonna make trains for kids in New York and they were gonna look like the trains that the kids saw in New York so the steamers didn't come until later so this really surprised me, and it was an interesting story, and it was uh, also one of the first uh, uh, governmental uh, expeditions into uh, controlling uh, pollution. And of course the railroads, the railroads had to run these underground. What they would do is they'd have a steamer going up to New Jersey or Pennsylvania, and then the steamer would uncouple with the tender would uncouple from the rest of the train and then the electric would couple up and would be uh, attached to the overhead wire and then would often bring these trains in underground to uh, Grand Central Station or Penn Station. So that's about all I know about these. And I'm going to have a lot of fun soldering. I say that sarcastically because it's not one of my favorite things to do. But I'm not a millionaire, so I couldn't buy one of these <laughs> all restored. Got this on the cheap. And once again, this has been a big lizard production. And sorry I missed your phone call, Gus. And hi to Mike. And hi to Janice and everyone else. Thanks for watching. Bye.